absolutely beautiful. Let's shift the conversation to some of the questions that our Sports MBT online community have sent through to us. And we'll start off with this question from Michael. And Michael is simply asking, how would you describe your brother, Diavolp, as a squash player? Um, Diavolp's a very, he's very passionate about the game. I think all like my whole family is very passionate about the game. He's dedicated. Um, he's also like, he likes to push himself to see how much more he can achieve in the game. Um, he's very calm, completely opposite of what Rudy and I are. Um, calm in, in the, in the black like on court. That's what I mean. Um, then I think he's got the potential to get very, very far in this game because he's so young as well. And he's, he's just pushed through since young age and he's at a perfect age now. He wants to go to Egypt now for about six months to go train with Gawad and those people. Um, so yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a boy with a lot of potential and I think he's going to get very, very far in this sport. Definitely. And, yep. and of course, we as South Africans will be watching him as he rises through the ranks as well. Absolutely. Rachel sends through this question and she simply asks, what is your style as a player? Are you more aggressive or are you more cool, calm and collected like your brother? I'm aggressive. I'm attacking on court. Um, I like the fast. I like the longer I can keep you on court, the better for me because I know that I'm quite fit. And I know the others aren't. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say attacking and fast and endurance and, yeah, that's me. <laughs> you just absolutely love destroying your opponents. That's basically what you say. Yes, yes, especially when it comes to the men. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Beautiful. Trust me, you'll never see me on court with you. <laughs> never. <laughs> Let's look at this question from Dineo. Dineo talks about the mental side of, of sport. And she says, how important is mental health to your success as an athlete? Look, um, I'll be honest. I struggled with mental for quite a couple of years. Um, never believed in myself. Like, I just, I'll do all the work. But when I get on court, I'm like, <clears throat> I can't do this. Like, I'm just not fit enough. I'm not strong enough. Um, so I've been working on the mental side for the last year and a half, two years. And, and it's absolutely been amazing what your brain can do mentally while you're on the court. Um, so because I'm very nervous, like I'll, I'll just be completely numb when I get on court. That's how nervous I got. And so, like, breathing exercises and especially my husband helping me um, with this, like, speaking to me, telling me, like, just believe in yourself. You can do this. Like, you're strong enough. You're fit enough. You, there's, there's a very little woman in, here in South Africa that can beat you. So, just go out there and enjoy the game. So, for me, uh, mental is such an important part of the sport. You have to believe in yourself and you have to, like, it's just so important. Definitely. Letabo sends through this question, simply asking about joining a professional squash association. He simply says, what are the requirements to join a professional squash association? Um, obviously, you need to care, be able to hit the ball. <laughs> 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 um, so you've got the professional association, you pay off like you can have like six months or a year, um, be a part of it. Um, I'm not sure what the costs are at the moment. So then you, it's like a, after you've paid, it's like a, you get points. So every tournament you play, you get points and that's how you accumulate it and, um, go up the rankings. Um, and then eventually when your points get up so high that you can go overseas and compete there. Sure. But it's, you know, it's quite, you have to play all the PSA tournaments that, that they, not, not all of them, but the more you play, the better for you and your points. If you would wish to take it any further, like going overseas and playing over there. Okay. 
Michelle sends through this question and she talks about one thing that athletes cannot avoid in the world of sports and that's of course injuries. She simply asks, what injuries have you sustained in the past as an athlete? Um, a couple of years, not a couple of years, like 10 years ago, I'd say I fell downstairs and I tore all the ligaments in my ankle. Sure. Um, so I was off for quite a while there. And then besides that, um, I had a, for a year and a half a struggle with my kidney. Um, I had to go for operation to remove stuff and put stuff in and all that stuff. So other than that, I have not really had injuries. I oh. think it's because I'm quite big on the whole strengthening part of um, I don't I don't look the part. I'm very skinny, I know. But uh, the strengthening part of the sport is quite um, important to me as well because I know when you're strength when you when you're strong, like the injuries don't really happen often. So I haven't really had any injuries. To me. I'm actually quite lucky, eh? You're incredibly lucky because a lot of athletes actually go through massive injuries throughout their professional careers. So oh. you're one of the lucky ones. I am. I am. I am very, very lucky. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's go through this question from Masesi. And she talks about something that professional athletes don't often talk about, but it's an important part of the process as well, is what is the processes for testing for doping in the sport of squash? Look, we haven't really been tested for doping. Um, first time I was tested was, I think, three years ago We at Nationals. That was my first time. And that that woman walks up to you and she's like, listen, you need to go for testing. I'm like, what? What are you doing? What do I need to do? And, like, they literally walked with me around the whole Joburg um, mall for about two hours. Like everything I put in my mouth, are you sure this is what you want to drink? Are you sure there's nothing wrong with it? I was like, what are you people doing? And um, so literally you just have a little cup that you have to wee-wee in for them and it gets like a lot of paperwork, a lot of paperwork, all about your history, your medical, what you had for the last seven days. Um, literally, like even if you had a little grandpa because you had a headache, you have to put that down. Your vitamins, you have to put that down. Um, so, yeah, this was my now last month for the, was my second time. So we don't really have like a big doping thing on the side of South Africa. I think it's more overseas. Um, but it's quite, it's quite terrifying. Um just, I don't know, I don't really go through the list saying, listen, you know, obviously I know like ephedrine and stuff like that is a no-go. But you don't really go through the list saying, listen, you're not allowed to have an Advil or anything like that. I mean, mm. we don't do that every single day. I'm not that professional for me to actually study the list. So it's not a big thing, but um, yeah, so I was tested last month. They said it takes up to three months. So now I have to sit here and wait for three months see if something's wrong, which I know is nothing wrong, but it's just the whole concept of they tested you. What if something is wrong? <laughs> and, that, and that makes you a little, a little bit nervous, of course. It does. It does. It's terrifying. Yeah, that's absolutely insane. But I suppose these are also the challenges that you have to deal with um, being yeah. a professional athlete because we would hate for one athlete to win a massive tournament and then find out later on that the athlete was doping exactly. as well. Exactly, having all that like hype of a, you just won this big tournament and then three months later gets taken away because you did something that you're not that supposed to. Exactly. Let's finish yeah. off with this last question from Nikki. And Nikki is simply asking for advice. What advice would you give someone that is keen to play professional squash in South Africa? I think the most important thing for me is like your mental toughness. Um, you got to believe in yourself. Um, knowing that whatever you put in is what you will get out. 
doesn't matter how hard it gets. I mean, I know sometimes you get on that court and you know you've been training so hard, but you play the utmost crappest of squash ever. Um, just to push through that and know that everything at the end, all your training, all your mental, all your physical, everything will just come together and it'll work out for you in the end. Absolutely. Every match, every game, every coaching session, every like, it'll all come together. Beautiful. Lazelle, I would simply like to thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate having you on the Sports MVT Insider. And of course, thank you so much for being such a phenomenal brand ambassador for the sport of squash in South Africa. And hopefully after this interview, we've encouraged a few more people to partake in the sport of squash and hopefully they can go professional as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for having me. It was awesome. You're locked on to the Sport MBT Insider, a podcast for unrelenting coverage of women in sport. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I absolutely loved diving deeper into the journeys of our athletes, coaches, and administrators to get to know them a little bit better than we do. Coming up next week, we bring you another athlete, coach, or administrator, and she shares her incredible and inspiring journey with us. Keep it locked onto Sport MBT, where we celebrate women in sport.